One tool many of us are using for online teaching is PowerPoint or Google Slides or Apple Keynote. <laughs> Whatever program you're using, a lot of us are using presentation slides in the classroom. Now that many of us are feeling more comfortable with getting on Zoom and with talking to students there, Kate and I wanted to share what we've learned so far about using presentation slides in the Ella class. Keep in mind though that like you don't need slides to do any of this. You can provide visual support by holding up physical objects to the camera, no screen share at all, writing something on a physical whiteboard and showing it to the camera. You can open up a text document and just type in Word or a screen share a photo directly. But many of us like and are comfortable with slide presentations. So let's talk about how to make the best slides possible for our students. In this video, we'll talk about design and content. For design, that's best practices for layout and font, size, and images for all class levels. For content, we'll talk about a couple of bad habits that everyone should look out for. So let's get into it. So what are the features on effective Ella slide? Well, it's pretty much what would be effective in any presentation. Let's just talk about design. So forget about the English language content and we'll just ask, what does the slide look like? As with all things online, your best practice is to keep it simple. All of these presentation programs come with themes that change the layout of your slides. They change the fonts, they add colors and shapes to the background, and they're generally visually interesting. But themes can actually make your slides harder to read. A plain white background with plain black text is always going to be the easiest to see and read on any device. And speaking of text, let's talk about the font. As I'm sure you already know, you wanna use the largest font you can. For me, I never go smaller than 0.25 font. And I go bigger if I have the space and I can. Especially for your students who are joining class on tablets or cell phones, what might be really easy to see on your computer screen could be really small and difficult on that device. So bump it up as big as you can, 25 or higher. Not just the size, but we also need to talk about which font we use. Some students will be learning not just English, but also the English alphabet for the first time. Especially for beginning students, it's important to use a handwriting font. We don't want to cause any extra confusion about why the letter A looks like that when that's not how I write it. Students might think it's a different letter altogether. And yes, that means Comic Sans is your friend. One last important design choice is your images. We always want to use real or at least realistic photos, not clip art or cartoons. For a quick example, let's say we're talking about food and one of our vocabulary words is eggs. Depending on your students' backgrounds and experiences, these two cartoony images might not connect with their mental picture of an egg. This white blob with a yellow circle in the middle might not mean anything to them at all. And you can't know what they're imagining. We always wanna use a real photo, like this egg carton photo, so that we're showing students the real life object or place and making real connections with things or people they have seen before. Even when I follow these design guidelines, there are some common bad habits with slide presentations that we need to keep an eye out for. The first one is making really busy slides. I kept the design simple. I have a plain background, I have a plain handwriting font, but the content isn't simple at all. Too much information on one slide like this can be difficult for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when I show my students this slide, they're probably not listening to me talk. They're too busy reading all of this information. And even though the font and background are simple, this is difficult to look at because I can't be sure what information goes with what picture. If I'm going to be talking about vocabulary in class like this, I really need to break this up and put each vocab word on its own slide so we can focus on one thing at a time. This can also be a problem when I just have a lot of text that I need to show. Maybe it is one idea at a time, but what we're practicing is a dialogue 
or I want students to tell me a story. What I really need in that situation is a Word document and not a slide at all. I can open up a plain text file and I can type out the conversation or type out what my students tell me happened over the weekend without needing to worry about how it fits on that little square. Similar to this one, the other bad habit that's really easy to do on accident is too many slides. Do you have more than 10 slides for a single class? That's a good moment to ask yourself, when will my students have time to talk? If I'm making my way through a presentation and as the teacher, I'm reading and explaining every slide, my students are doing a whole lot of listening and maybe not a whole lot of talking. It's really good to consider when will I stop presenting and give my students the floor to try out their new English. Kate has a really easy rule for this. It's the 70-30 rule. And basically that just means that we want students to be talking for 70% of the time. As the teacher, I've got 30% to give an example, explain something, show my students the question, and then they should really take over and be trying things out. 10 slides isn't automatically bad. More than 10 slides doesn't necessarily mean you need to start deleting things. If I'm teaching a vocabulary lesson and I want to give each vocab word its own, own slide, I can easily go over 10. The important thing is to take that 10 slides as your little warning pop-up to just stop and ask, when will I close the screen share so everyone can see each other and just practice? These two bad habits, busy slides and long presentations kind of go hand in hand because they're both about going a little overboard on the content. I'm definitely guilty of this sometimes too in my classes, but I'm working on it by being really intentional about counting my slides and planning times when I'm going to close the screen share to just talk. Speaking of busy, <laughs> that was a lot of information for one video. Let's just quickly review it. Your most important rule is to keep it simple. Use plain black text on a plain white background. Use a large, 25 or more, handwriting font. Use real photos and images. Avoid busy slides. If you need a long text, move it to a Word document. Avoid more than 10 slides per class. Save time for your students to talk. That's everything I have for you. Thanks for watching.